Aquarium Water Parameters to Control for Healthy Flower Horn Fish Friends, Aquarium Water is the most critical environment component for your flower horn fish. Unfortunately, flower horn fish keepers often overlook aquarium water quality and sometimes neglect it. While humans can leave a smoky room or one filled with deadly car exhaust, but flower horn fish are in a closed environment and can't escape if the water becomes toxic or dangerous. Learn about water elements like ammonia, nitrite, phosphate and pH that can cause harm for flower horn fish if not appropriately maintained and balanced carefully in an aquarium. Before continuing this video and telling you all the exact answers to this, let us welcome you all to our channel Blue Aquatics, where you all get the best information about flower horn fish keeping. So first of all, we'll discuss about ammonia poisoning. Ammonia is a natural waste product of flower horn fish metabolism and if it builds up in the water, it is very harmful to the flower horn fish. Anytime your flower horn fish are in distress or you have sudden flower horn fish death, consider it as increased ammonia being a possible cause. Another component is aquarium algae. Algae growth is a fact of life that every aquarium owner will face sooner or later. Some algae growth is normal and healthy, but excessive algae growth is unsightly and can be hazardous to flower horn fish and plants. The reasons could be excess lightning, too much flower horn fish food and lack of sufficient water changes can increase algae growth in your aquarium due to an accumulation of phosphate or nitrate in the water. If algae is an ongoing problem, you might even consider adding an algae eating flower horn fish or using a commercial algae side product made for aquariums. Now comes the important component aquarium water testing. Friends, is aquarium water testing essential? Some flower horn fish hobbyists categorically say no, while others test everything and anything. Water tests can significantly help you if your aquarium has a problem, but you are unsure of the cause. What should be tested and how often is not a simple answer. It depends on your water quality and the problems you are experiencing. The basics include testing for ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Flower horn fish produce these waste components and are harmful if they accumulate in the water. Mineral in the water can alter the acid base balance, hardness and alkalinity. Tests are also available for chlorine, chloramine, copper and phosphate which can be found in tap water. Many types of test kits and test strips can be found at your local pet store and in some stores as well. They will test your water for free or at a low cost. In a new aquarium, the water should be tested daily or at least a few times per week. Once the aquarium is established and the water tests are regular, you can try the water every few weeks to months. Now let's discuss about cloudy water. Friends, cloudy water can have several causes. Depending on the cause, there is usually a corresponding cure. There is no magic bullet solution for dirty water. It does take a little investigation to come up with a solution. Based on the color of the water and the circumstances leading up to the appearance of cloudy water, you can usually find the root cause. In new aquariums, dust from the gravel, if it was not thoroughly rinsed before use, can turn the water cloudy. 
After a day or so in a new aquarium, bacterial blooms can also make the water appear dirty until the beneficial bacteria settle onto a surface to grow. If too much food is added to the aquarium, not only will the dissolving food make the water cloudy, but new bacteria growing to consume the extra nutrients will make the water cloudy again. Using a water test kit to measure the ammonia and nitrate levels will help determine if they are high, which will cause bacteria to grow. Too much light, phosphate or nitrate can lead to green water. An explosion of algae growth as well. If the filter becomes too dirty, it will lose its filtering capacity and the water may become cloudy. Water changes, cleaning the filter, increased filtration and commercial chemicals added to precipitate suspended particles in the water will all help make the water clear again. So you can practice all of it to make your aquarium water back to normal. Now discussing about the rocks that can affect water chemistry. Friends, the use of rocks in your aquarium can affect water chemistry. Knowing how and if a rock will affect your water is often challenging. But there are some ways to determine if the stones you are about to use in your aquarium are safe or not. If adding vinegar or another acid to the rock's surface causes any bubbling, it is best not to use it in the aquarium. You can soak rocks you want to use in bucket of water and monitor the pH over a few days to see if the minerals cause any change in the rocks. In freshwater aquariums, using gravel made from limestone, dolomite, aragomite, crushed coral or oyster shells will raise the hardness and pH of the water. It is better to use quartz gravel for freshwater aquariums if the flowerhorn fish are not a species that requires the water to have a high pH or alkalinity. Always thoroughly rinse any rocks or gravel used in an aquarium to remove contaminants and dust. Now about massive water changes that can kill flowerhorn fish. Friends, can water changes kill your flowerhorn fish? The quick answer to this is yes. Anything that suddenly changes the aquatic environment can kill your flowerhorn fish. The amount of water you change at one time and all the factors from temperature to pH and chemical composition to bacterial colonies may adversely affect the flowerhorn fish. Water changes are a must for healthy aquarium, usually performed every week to once a month, depending on the aquarium's conditions. So when performing the water changes, be sure that the new water has been dechlorinated and it is about the same temperature as the aquarium water. The pH of the new water should be adjusted to bring the existing aquarium water back to the correct level. Usually 7 to 8 depending on flowerhorn fish species and local water pH. As the aquarium water pH gradually decreases becoming acidic over time and needs to be buffered definitely by increasing alkalinity to bring it back to the correct level. So you should learn more about the safe ways to make water changes. Now comes about nitrite poisoning. Nitrite poisoning follows closely on the heels of ammonia, a major killer of aquarium flowerhorn fish. When you think you are home free after losing half your flowerhorn fish to ammonia poisoning, the nitrite level rises and puts your flowerhorn fish at risk again. Anytime ammonia levels are elevated, increased nitrite will soon follow and quickly be lethal. So definitely monitor it and cure it as well. Now comes the most important part, nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle goes by many names. 
साइकिलिंग नाइट्रिफिकेशन द बायोलॉजिकल साइकिल द स्टार्टअप साइकिल एंड द ब्रेक इन साइकिल एज वेल नो मैटर द टर्म यू यूज Every newly established aquarium goes through a process of establishing a beneficial bacterial colony. Older aquariums also go through periods during which the bacterial colonies fluctuate. Failure to understand this process is perhaps the most significant factor in flower horn fish loss. So, you should learn about the nitrogen cycle and how to deal with critical periods during the revolution. The first step of the nitrogen cycle is the production of ammonia by the flower horn fish and by bacteria that breaks down feces uneaten food and other organic debris in the aquarium this ammonia is toxic to the flower horn fish it takes time in a new aquarium for beneficial bacteria to grow so if the tank is too small for a flower horn fish the ammonia can increase faster than the bacteria can break down and the flower horn fish will die soon beneficial bacteria species will convert ammonia into nitrite which is also toxic after the ammonia is converted to nitrite another species of bacteria starts growing that converts the poisonous nitrite into non toxic nitrate The nitrate will accumulate in the aquarium water until periodic partial water changes remove it. This cycle can take up to 4 to 6 weeks to initially complete in new aquarium. Now let's throw some light about phosphate in the aquarium. Phosphate is present in every aquarium even though many aquarium owners are not aware of it. Phosphate can be found in some cities tap water. is also in the food given to flower horn fish and can accumulate in aquarium water if the aquarium is not maintained correctly the phosphate levels will rise and contribute to algae growth the results are not only insignificantly but can become harmful to your flower horn fish contact your city water supply company to ask if the local tap water contains phosphate or you can also get a phosphate test kit to measure the phosphate level in the aquarium water if the local city tap water is high in phosphate performing water changes using tap water won't lower the phosphate in the aquarium in this case it is necessary to use deionized or reverse osmosis filter water for your water changes if the local water doesn't contain phosphate then regular water changes using dechlorinated tap water can keep phosphate at low levels now let's just discuss about the ph what is ph water ph measures how acidic or basic the water is the term ph stands for the power of hydrogen and is measured on a scale of 1 to 14 water is h2o but the ions hydrogen and hydroxyl make up water if there is more h positive than oh negative the water is acidic ranging ph from 1.0 to 6.9 the water is essential if there is less h positive than oh negative which is ph 7.1 to 14.0 When there are the exact quantities of each the water is neutral and has a pH of 7.0 the h in ph is always capitalized as h is the chemical symbol for hydrogen not a single unit ph value is suitable for all flower horn fish many species of fish live in different water environments like the ocean ponds rivers and estuaries Each of these bodies of water will have different pH levels. Salt water fish may prefer a pH of 8.0 or higher. Meanwhile, fresh water fish may be more comfortable with a pH of 6.0 or 7.0. The best advice is to learn all you can know about the species you plan to keep and attempt to mimic its natural habitat in your aquarium environment. However, most 
freshwater aquarium fish will do well in a pH of 7.0 to 7.5 as long as any change in the pH is done gradually over time. So guys if you like the content of this video then do subscribe to our channel Blue Aquatics. This will motivate us to create more videos. Also ring the bell icon so that you will never miss any critical updates. So signing off for now and have a happy flower horn fish keeping everyone.